first thing to do today, we're going to pick those berries that we planted yesterday, and five per pot, not bad, that means 20 overall. So if that's not enough to heal that meal tank, it can just die of colon cancer for all I care. Thankfully, should be more than enough, I think seven or eight are required, which should, um leave me with a dozen or so that is never going to see the light of day because it's a freaking orange berry and it gets obsoleted very 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 fast in this game anyway we're about to enter the burn tower at long last you can see the legendary dogs down there and this guy here returning from crystal wasn't in gold and silver his name is using he's the Suicune hunter Yep, that story arc comes back from Crystal, and we're going to be encountering Suicune a few times throughout the game, except we're going to be catching it much, much later, all the way over in Kanto, as a matter of fact. And yeah, he's aware that it's pretty much hopeless to uh, try and hunt down a beast that can run away as swiftly as Suicune, which makes me wonder why he's even attempting it in the first place. Especially with his dorky outfit that, um, well, his, uh, his, I think he actually had a, gener a generic sprite in Crystal, but, uh, it, of course it didn't do justice to his really outlandish outfit. He looks like a, I don't know what he looks like, but he looks dorky. And, uh, you can sort of notice it now with his new and improved, uh, uh overworld sprite, but you're gonna really notice it. Uh, in uh, his battle sprite later on, because yeah, we're gonna be fighting him. But now this guy here is Morty, the local gym leader who uses ghost-type Pokémon. So, uh, I'm going to go over my strategies for dealing with him at a later time, though, because there's a certain thought process that has to go into fighting him, especially when my only source of super effect is, is also getting hit for super effective hits. Anyway, now we got we have to contend with Silver again. This is going to be our third battle against him. And I got to say this guy is even more of a jerk than he was in the original. So, yet another area in which uh, the game improves upon the original. Well, that is if you enjoy being trash talked uh, by him. Anyway, let's get started on the battle proper. He leaves with Ghastly, and one wing attack should easily take it down. We all know firsthand how weak Ghastly can be. I had to nurse one through the early stages of Crystal. I had to do it again in this LP, so that one hit KO, really not much of a surprise. Against. Magnemite, on the other hand, is gonna be a pain to deal with because I have nothing that's super effective against it, so I'm just going to try and hit it with my hardest, uh, with, with, hit it with my best move that hits the hardest, sorry about that, which is Thunderbolt. Don't think that's enough, gonna be enough to kill it, nope, but it came close, oh god. Yep, we're gonna be playing Confusion Roulette, folks, because uh, sending back Crobat is not a very good idea. There we go, managed to hit through the Confusion. Uh, I don't know who is next, but I'm going to be sending a Crobat back out now. Because now that Magnemite's out of the way, there should be no more threat. Crobat against Zubat! Place your bets, folks! This is going to be an exciting battle! Not anyway. Um, question now, is it going to be enough for a one-hit KO? Probably, because Zubat is yet another weak Pokémon that I've had to nurse for a while earlier in this LP. It's strange how our teams are rather similar, except his Pokémon aren't even evolved. Except for Quilava, of course. So, um... Yeah, right. Whatever floats your boat. Anyway, Wing Attack, probably not a one-hit KO yet, since we're dealing with an evolved form. Flame Wheel should do a bit of damage. Ah, oh, but it's the hacks that kicks in! Just wonderful! Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna finish it off with, uh, Wing Attack. Useless Quick Claw is useless. I'm gonna slap that on, I'm gonna slap that on the Lapras once I get it. But, uh, yeah, I don't know about you, but I'm not about to head into a dungeon with a burned Crobat. So I'm gonna head back out as soon as I get the chance. Uh, yeah, as I said before, whatever floats your boat. 
Yeah, I got my ass kicked by a weakling three times! But that doesn't count because he's a weakling! Get a clue, you dolt! If you get your ass kicked by a weakling, a so-called weakling but, uh, like that, odds are you should probably be playing My Little Pony games instead of, uh, instead of doing Pokemon battles. Anyway, just wondering though, is that burn going to affect my capability to one-hit KO it? Not at all. So hopefully I don't get too many um, random encounters on the way out. Nothing! Okay, good. Um, so I'm just gonna head back to heal and after that I'm gonna head back inside. Uh, something that I wanted to bring up since I've been, I've been abusing uh, annotations a lot lately and that problem hasn't sh really showed up lately but it has happened in the past uh, just wanted to mention that because well what I do uh, when I LP DS games like this is that I shove the annotations to the side where there's nothing but you know black bars where other LPers would put all kinds of stuff but I don't have the kind of software or the technical know-how to make them work, so it's pretty much a moot point anyway. Anyway, what I wanted to say was that, um, you know, if, uh, if I for just uh, to make it clear, it's not scolding anyone, it's just um, to, uh, for future reference, is that if I forget so if I forget to say something in a video or, or I get something wrong and you, you're not sure if you should correct me via a comment or whatever, if you're, if you're watching my LPs on certain mobile devices that where um, the screen fits perfectly and you don't see the black, uh, the black letter boxes to the sides where I shove my annotations, well, obviously you're going to miss my annotations. So just saying, if you're hesitating, um, don't comment because odds are somebody already did if, uh, if uh, I messed up on something. And by the way, by the way, now that I'm done with that train of thought, which by the way wasn't a uh, complaint aimed towards anyone in particular, fire breathers in a wooden tower that already burned down. This is the remains of that tower. Fire breathers are in there, and really? We're gonna be playing that Russian roulette game? God, I hate smokescreen. Well, I guess it's my fault for not switching, but Crobat still needs a bit of experience in my opinion. So, that's why I'm doing this. I'm gonna... Does he have another Pokemon or so I'm just gonna switch out, but... Yeah, anyway, we got a fire breather in the remains of a wooden tower that already burned down, and that fire cost the lives of three legendary Pokemon. They were later revived, but they died in that fire. What are you guys even thinking? Are you thinking straight? I mean, breathing fire in that kind of shack would be like, I don't know, breathing fire in a wooden building? Uh, yeah, whatever. But seriously, don't do that. I don't, I don't know if uh, the game designers thought... I don't know if that was their idea of humor, because I'm pretty sure those guys weren't in Gold, Silver, Crystal. Well, maybe they were in Gold and Silver, but I know they weren't in Crystal, because they changed the Burn Tower once in Crystal, and they changed it again in Hard Gold and Soul Silver, which isn't, by the way, the same layout as in Gold and Silver, and... Yeah, the reason that... Okay, so that's for the guy who thought who set the thing on fire in the last video. No, it was uh, lightning. So, to whoever commented that, uh, I didn't remember the cause off the top of my head, but uh, it's lightning. I'm practicing my fire breathing in the burn tower. Don't try this at home. And those bastards are proud of it! This place is like a freaking national monument. The ruins of Lugia's former roost, and the house where the legendary dogs pretty much lived since they already died in the fire, and now they're in this building again. So, yeah. Those guys are proud of what they're doing. Yeah. Uh, I'm not the, re I'm not the reason that this tower is burned up. 
Well, might as well be with that kind, with the kind of care that you're uh, using right now. But seriously, that's the kind of thing. You know, it's almost like some sort of sick joke or something. Because this guy, even if he's careful, he could very easily end up burning the ruins down even more. Because I hear so many stories of houses burning down because someone fails to extinguish their cigarette properly before going to bed that, well, it's... It happens sometimes, so a, f so a fire breather doing this inside the ruins of uh, such valuable ruins. So, so I'm sort of starting to sound like Rain Sage here, but that's what they are to the people of Johto, very valuable ruins. But anyway, enough about that. I'm going to try and get done with this place as fast as I can before those bastards end up burning down the place even further. Uh, by the way, you are probably noticing that... <laughs> it happened again! I picked up the item right as the phone started ringing. But, uh, yeah. Uh, if you remember, the guy who uh, gave me the dowsing machine told me that there were a crap ton of uh, hidden items in uh, the burn tower, especially in the basement. Uh, as I said before, I'm not covering these because I'm really um, not interested in looking in every last square of the mansion. Uh, even, even if the dowsing machine is friendlier than it has been in the past, in my opinion, it's still nowhere near as good as the one in black and white. Some people actually prefer this one, but I say the one in black and white is the only one that is actually making it worth to cover those uh, those items. So if I ever let's play... Oh, I'm just gonna interrupt that because I just reached the legendary dogs. Raikou and Entei go bye-bye, but Suikun stays around a bit longer, chilling before going away as well. And here's Suikun... Suikun using! Then again, isn't like... Uh, no, I was about to say uh, an anagram, but doesn't quite match up the number of letters, and there are two E's in using, but uh, the names are actually sort of similar. Um, whatever. But, uh, yeah, obviously, apparently, Suikun took a liking to me, which is why I have to wait so much longer to catch him compared to the other two. Speaking of the other two, let's take a look at the town map for a second. As you can see, you can track down Raikou and NT using the uh, using the town map function of the Poke Gear, and Raikou was on Route 33, which is between the Union Cave and Azalea, and I didn't see NT anywhere, at least in the few seconds where the map was up. So I'm going to go out on a limb and assume that it's in the exact same route. So yeah, you can track down both of them instead of having to meet them once in order to record them in uh, the Pokédex, which was really freaking annoying, so they're a lot easier to catch in the remakes, thank God. So if I wanted to, I could go try and locate them no problem. However, I'm rather ill-equipped to do so at the moment with no access to Dusk Balls, and only two Pokémon that are, you know, at level 29, and Raikou and Entei are at level 40, so... Yeah, they're going to run away before I get the chance to do anything, so... Yeah, I'm gonna have to wait... Oh! I'm such a dolt! I intended on distributing the HM that I got last time in the beginning of this video, but totally forgot about it, so... I guess still got a minute to, um do it right now because now I'm confronted with uh, Strength Boulder's Surf. I'm gonna give it to Wooper, obviously. I, I gave it a few levels, but nothing too major. After evolving Furt, I was kinda sick of grinding. And yes, I evolved it off-camera. Sue me. So now I have a Furret that can actually learn Strength. So, which move are we gonna flush this time? Fury Swipes! No contest! I hate that freaking move. So, that's it for today. Next time we're gonna get out of this tower and hopefully start the gym.